As the human population grows, the demand for Earth's resources increases. Currently, our human population growth is growing exponentially. As you can see, it's following that exponential growth curve. Now, we haven't hit what we would consider the human carrying capacity for Earth. At this point, it's unknown. Now, <clears throat> look at the timeline in this graph. Exactly when did we start to hit that exponential growth? Because starting at about 1150 AD, our population stayed pretty low, even into the early 1900s. What do you think it was that exactly caused that big spike in the population growth? Well, one of the reasons is technology. Technology has helped increase Earth's carrying capacity. So gas-powered farm equipment enabled us to um, farm and, and grow and produce more food. Medical advancements have helped people stay alive longer. We have new technologies. Surgery is completely different than what it was, even in the early 1900s, um, as well as our treatment of and knowledge of diseases. So currently, the, the growing human population exerts pressure on all of Earth's natural resources. So we're going to look at non-renewable resources first. They are used faster than they form. Things like coal and oil. So in our nutrient cycling packet, I want to refresh your memory, we talked a little bit um, in the nitrogen cycle and in the carbon cycle about some of these resources. Specifically in the carbon cycle, we talked about our burning and combustion of fossil fuels. Coal and oil are two of those non-renewable sources. Renewable sources <coughs> cannot be used up or can replenish themselves over time. Things like wind, water, sunlight, things that will cycle or there's a never-ending supply of. So growing, there's been a growing use of non-renewable resources um, and that may lead to a crisis. Resources must be properly managed. So you can see the image here is of a wind farm and hopefully you learned in the nutrient cycling packet that wind is the primary reason or the primary source of most of the energy used in the state of Wisconsin. So we're trying to use renewable resources as our energy source. So what we need to pay attention to is the effective management of Earth's resources to help meet the needs of the future. Earth's resources need to be used responsibly. Careless use of those resources can make them unavailable to future generations. Easter Island is an example of irresponsible resource use. An ecological footprint is the amount of land needed to support a single person. How many acres do you think it would take to support you? Just you, not even your whole family. You'll find out when you take the ecological footprint quiz. So the land must produce and maintain enough food, water, shelter, energy, and a way for you to get rid of your waste. Now, there are several factors that affect the size of an ecological footprint. The amount and the efficiency of resource use. So there might be a lot available, but yet if we're constantly using it, that resource is going to become limited. The amount and toxicity of the waste that's produced. Hmm, what in the heck is that all about? Well, if you use something, but yet then you pour the remainder down the drain and it creates a high toxicity, that, dr that substance that goes to our um, waste management facility sometimes can't be removed from the water supply. So then it's there and it builds up. So every person that uses it builds it up. Now, let's take a look at the graph. Here we're looking at the population in millions and the ecological footprint. What exactly does it tell you when you look at this? So the population is on the y-axis, and that's going to be the green bars. The ecological footprint is on the right-hand axis, and that's in the orange. Which country, in your opinion, creates the greatest ecological footprint for the amount of people it has? If you decided North America, you're correct. Now, 
which one has the best ecological footprint based upon its population size or leaves the smallest footprint? I'd say Asian, Asia and the Pacific Islands. Okay? Now, what does that tell you about what we do in North America? What do you think needs to change?